Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's okay. go. Hey everyone, welcome back to Quality Matters. I'm your hostess, Darcy Chambers. I'm here with Kyle Chambers. <laughs> and we have another guest for you today. We have Lanny Parkane. And uh, I guess, in fairness, we go to church with Lanny at Southeast Church of Christ. And I actually don't even know your job title. You just do everything here. <laughs> <laughs> My business card says that uh, I am a minister of pastoral care. Okay. Ah. He really does way more than that, though. Um, <laughs> and we wanted to sit down with him because of his involvement in one of, um, I guess, a program that we're affiliated with. We're not in charge of this. And Kyle's very excited mm -hmm. about this. Very much. Um, so tell us a little bit about the Family Promise program. Family Promise is a unique nonprofit organization. Their, their goal is to take homeless families, and by families, that means there are always children involved. Okay. There might be one or two parents, but there's always children. Okay. And find those families that are capable of and willing to commit to doing the things they need to do to get back into independent living. So then, I don't, Kyle is more excited, well, not more, I'm excited to do this, but I think Kyle has an idea of where he wants us to go, so. Yeah, so, you know, we talk about how quality really matters. It just doesn't matter where you go. One of the key parts of any quality management system is planning. So how many families are in the program right now? At this time, there are two. Okay. We, we can take up to four families. Okay. Uh, that is predicated on the uh, rather unusual and unique circumstances of housing these families in churches. Okay. So they go to a different church every week, mm -hmm. uh, and the church provides a place for them to sleep, mm -hmm. provides meals for them, mm -hmm. uh, provides... Um, child care and, and other things that help them to, to uh, do the things they need to to get back on their feet. We have 13 churches in the network, okay. so they rotate between 13 churches mm -hmm. and they spend their days either working or looking for work and mm -hmm. we provide a day center for them to go to during the day. They have access to uh, computers, mm -hmm. internet, they have access to laundry and uh, showers and mm -hmm. a place to store their goods and a right. place to relax. So there are a lot of moving pieces, and planning is the key. And, and that's what I want to talk about because, again, it just doesn't matter where you go. These things are just insanely important. So tell me a little bit about how do you, all, how do you manage 13 different organizations to effectively function as one? Really good question, and <laughs> we have, of course, a board of directors, mm -hmm. and we have, um, right now we have two paid staff people. We have a director, mm -hmm. and then we have another person who works more directly with the families. The director is kind of the overseer, and uh, among everything else, she works with funding, raising mm -hmm. funds, mm -hmm. interacting with the community, interacting with the churches, with the volunteers, there's a huge number of volunteers. I bet. Southeast has, I think, something like 60, 65 people. And that's just and one, one church. One yeah. of 13 yeah. churches. Right. Uh, so it's, a, it's an immensely complex uh, operation. Uh, I'm sure. Uh, sure. You know, I, I run into uh, doing work right now with um, you know, a rather large corporate organization, uh, downtown Houston. And you know they even they have a whole building named after them, but within it are all of these little smaller subdivided internal corporations that all kind of stand apart and on their own from one another. And I, I see I bring this up because it's kind of a very to me a very interesting parallel. We've got kind of the same thing here of all these different you know organizations that are all kind of unique and independent, but then have you know 50, 60 people involved at each each little uh, little node. How often do y'all uh, meet and talk, and and, and who, how do, how do these decisions that need to be made get made? Each church has a, a coordinator, okay, a person who manages for that individual church as far as all the scheduling that goes into providing meals and providing overnight hosts because we have a family here 
from the church overnight, every night that they're here. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, arranging for laundry, arranging for uh, all of the myriad of things that go into taking care of these families when they are under our care. So there's one person that is in charge of that. Okay. And then those 13 coordinators mm -hmm. talk to each other. Okay. And all of them talk to, of course, those paid personnel that manage the oversight of the entire network. Gotcha. Also, to add to this, we're part of a national network yeah. to whom we uh, are connected and right. help support, and mm -hmm. they support us with ideas and, and training okay. and literature. Okay. Uh, but uh, we keep a, a large amount of autonomy within each network. Gotcha. Interesting. That's Interesting. Nice. So, how many families, uh, I guess, how long do they usually, sh I know there's probably not a usual, but uh, usually stay in the program? Like, wh what's that look like? Nationwide, kind of the national average, families will stay in the program for approximately three months. Okay. And within that three months, most of them will have secured employment. Mm -hmm. They will have gained some necessary skills in money management, mm -hmm. parenting, interviewing. Gotcha. And they will be ready to move into independent housing. So there's a lot more going on than, than just caring for, for physical needs for the folks here. Absolutely. So, well, I know like the day center, part of homelessness is it's hard to get a job because you don't have a physical address to put on a job application. The day center provides that for them. That's true. So... Yeah, I mean, just one simple thing. Yeah, that, that, that was one thing I thought about before. When I, I think when the day center was first being put up, is that's when it finally it, you know, kind of dawned on me. It's like, oh my gosh, how do you actually fill out a job application? I mean, you hear people mm -hmm. say sarcastic all the time and just get a job, but yeah, well, you car, don't have an your, address. Your car is not really a good address. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> um, so I, I guess tell me a little bit more about you know how how do you all uh, kind of teach these skills and do you have any uh, any structured programs for it? We do, and, and we have people who have those skills who volunteer their time to conduct formal classes. Okay. At usually at the day center, mm -hmm. but not necessarily. But um, there are there are people who have those unique skills that we bring into the the operation into the program. Okay. And and they're gracious enough to do that at their own cost and expense. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, how, I guess, how do y'all find folks that are in need, in need that, that kind of fit the profile? Yeah, really good question. We we get most of our families through referrals from the schools, but that's not by any means a, an exclusive thing. They can come from anywhere. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we have a large number of applications to arrive at a fairly small number of actual clients because the program that we have is very demanding on people coming into it. Mm -hmm. There are high expectations and they covenant with us that they will do certain things. Right. We take over a lot of control of their life for a very short period of time to help them get back in control right. of their life. And there are a lot of people who are not willing to do that. that so what would the requirements be that people aren't willing to turn over? Well, for one thing, they have to be very accountable for their for their money management. Okay. They're basically put on an allowance. Oh. Because we want them, they're not incurring any expense. Mm -hmm. We're taking right. all of their expense, and we want them to use any money that they make to accumulate the amount of money it takes to get back into because mm -hmm. it costs money to get into housing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And also that gives him some training on financial responsibility mm -hmm. and managing their money better when, when we turn it back over to them. Right. Yeah, I, I could see that, uh, see that being an issue. I mean, I know that, you know, we did the Dave Ramsey, not the, the same, but the Dave Ramsey's financial piece. And, you know, it's, it's real easy to keep up with the program those first couple of months afterwards. But then six months later, it's really easy to fall into into old habits again. Mm -hmm. And I can imagine when you're just really kind of hanging on on the bottom rungs for a little while, that would be really difficult. And we do. We do have a program in place to 
to follow these people. We don't just, when they leave here after three months or four months right. or whatever, we don't just drop them. Right. Uh, they become independent of us, mm -hmm. but we still stay in touch with them. We have a program to, to help them make sure that they have transportation if they don't have a car coming in. Mm -hmm. Hard to maintain a job in Texas and, and Houston mm -hmm. yeah. if you don't have transportation. So even once they're out of the program, you help provide transportation for even them? Even as they're in here, we, we are working toward making sure that they can get to that job interview yeah. and then get to the job. And we're working now, just in the beginning stages, of finding a way to, in some cases at least, provide what we're calling interim housing, where they don't have to go into uh, a, an apartment with the full weight of right. that monthly overhead mm -hmm. on their shoulders. So kind of ease back so, into it. Right. If we, uh, if we can provide them a place that we own, uh -huh. or control anyway, mm -hmm. where they can maybe pay 25% of the rent right. for a couple of months, and then 50%. That's amazing. And then at some point, then they that are, would be nice. are back amazing. into their full, the full weight of independent living. So nah. I, I, that sounds to me like continual improvement. It is. <laughs> the it Family is. Promise Organization is. is constantly looking for yeah. ways to improve and continue helping their guests. Is it, that's what y'all call exactly. them, guests. And, and any any successful organization, that's, that's you have to operate that way. You, know, you talk about the, the follow-ups that you do with this. Well, you know, again, just kind of make parallels to how all of this stuff is really so incredibly similar is you know, this is effectively customer satisfaction like mm -hmm. what we just talked about on the last podcast right mm -hmm. you know how uh, uh matt calls what 100 150 customers a day now no you're mm -hmm. not making 150 calls a day but the idea is to follow up with folks and see see how they're doing see how they're operating and 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 what else you know might could be done there mm -hmm. so i know one thing in particular we wanted to talk about was family promise took a year off at one point to kind of i guess to regroup or to, I don't know. What did y'all do? <laughs> well, it, it comes right back to your core subject, planning and and continually improving. Mm -hmm. And um, we had a breakdown in in planning. There were uh, gaps in our business plan, if you will, mm -hmm. to provide the continual ongoing funding that this requires. Gotcha. And when you run out of money, mm -hmm. you shut down. Mm -hmm. And so we have uh, took a, a couple of years off and figured out what we did wrong mm -hmm. and figured out how we could not do that again. <laughs> yeah. And came back with a better business plan, better planning, and better execution. Good. And uh, hopefully we're on a much more stable well, I think in preparation for this, Kyle and I were talking about that, and I said, I kind of asked him, well, how does that connect to the corporations? And he says it's the same thing, you know, you still got interested parties, the homeless people, and that has to be hard to shut down your program that you know is helping people and say, no, we mm -hmm. have to shut it down and do better. Mm -hmm. And so many times companies just keep doing it the wrong way because yeah. they don't want to stop, and it's probably effectively costing them more money to yeah. keep doing it the wrong way than it would be to shut it down. And in this case, it wasn't necessarily, I mean, I guess it was about the money because that's, yeah. <laughs> that's what shut y'all down. But, but you know, going back to kind of what, uh, again, what we were talking about last time with uh, Deming and some of his ideas is um, he calls it tampering. So if the system is not in control and it's not cohesive and it's not working, and you make these little tiny adjustments over and over and over and over, it calls that tampering with the system. Mm -hmm. And he used a great example of, you know, a man that was told to cut, you know, 100 boards to 63 inches. Well, by the time he got to the 100th board, he was cutting them at 48 inches because he was using the previous board to measure the cut for uh -huh. the next board. Yeah. And so each one was just slightly shorter. shorter. And so it's tampering with the system. And so you want to avoid that when possible. Obviously, in a lot of situations in life, it's not possible to just put a stop on it when things aren't going well. But it's a good thing to be able to do when you can literally afford it or you, know, you can't afford it, just however it works. But it's good to be able to put a stop and, and start new again. Mm -hmm. and sometimes that's not even in your control. Sometimes it, you just, it, the control is taken away from you, you have to do it. Yeah. yeah. You don't have any options. 
Yeah. And you mentioned this being like a corporation. Nonprofits are exactly like corporations, mm-hmm. but they have the added challenge of being volunteer. Mm-hmm. And that changes the whole dynamics of everything, and, and it really brings planning and management to a higher level. I'm sure. Because in a corporation, the boss says, do it. <laughs> in, a, in a nonprofit, you say, would you be willing to? Or yeah. would you please? Mm-hmm. And the answer is either yes or no. So it's a whole different world. It's a, it's a whole new set of challenges, yeah, but the sure. core idea is challenge. exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to back up a little bit, almost to the beginning, I guess. So <laughs> what is the process for these families to get involved with Family Promise? They, they go through an interview process. They go through a background check. Uh, they go through um, a series of commitment, commitment documents mm-hmm. that... They agreed to do certain things, and we agreed to do certain things. Uh, obviously, first of all, you have to have the, the correct family dynamic. There has to right. be the children, because the children. this is all about the children. Right. One interesting thing, by the way, um, when they leave the churches, they go to the day center mm-hmm. each day. And by law, all of the public schools are required to provide transportation for them to their school. Mm-hmm. So even though they're moving in different school districts every week, they they keep their own their school. school. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's a really big thing. I had thing. recently yeah. read that on yeah, the that's website. Uh, that's huge. Like, kids need that some exactly. It, would, it yeah. would be sure. impossible oh, we gosh. Were, if they didn't have that. Uh, I just uh, really, really. I can't hurt. imagine the added challenge on a parent to constantly oh, have gosh. to, you know, re-enroll, re-enroll, oh, re-enroll at a new school. You couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. We created enough uh, hardship and obstacles on them intentionally for their benefit, mm-hmm. right? Without adding those sorts of things, we yeah. could not. Keep well, for and their I know benefit. y'all work very closely with the school. I know somebody from the school district has come to our church and talked to us before, so I know y'all have a close relationship with Clear Creek ISD anyway. We do. Um, all of them to help yeah mm-hmm. so so I guess to close this out just because this is something that I've really actually wanted to do since since we started the podcast I'm dying to, dying <laughs> to do this because I just love what y'all do so much um, how how would folks you know if, if they know someone in need how would they how would they need to, to contact you guys or, or to get in touch to, to try to get someone some help just go to the website get our phone number and have the party, preferably, preferably have the party mm-hmm. call our office. Okay. And that's all it takes to get it started. Now, we'll get it listed in the show notes, but can you go ahead and tell us the, uh, the web address and the phone number? No. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's Family Promise of Clear that's, Creek. You yeah. can Google that. And it okay. kinda, I Googled that before right. we came today, and it comes up pretty and the phone easy. Is in there. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Well, I will make sure that it's all, all listed in there. Do you have any other questions? I don't think so. Now, I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lanny. Thanks. You're very welcome.